Hello, welcome to this episode of White Golf Geography. Today we're going to look at the Tropical Storms Assessment and review what we've done so far. The answers for question number one are C and D. Now, in this specification, it's really important that you, it says on here, you tick the correct boxes, but actually on the question it says shade in the circles. So if you shade in the circles, C and D, that is correct. At the bottom of the screen here, we can see there's the wrong methods of doing it. So you've got a cross, you've got a little dot in the middle, you've got a shade and you've got a tick. So don't do that. If you actually make a mistake, feel free to cross it out and then select another answer. If you want to return to your original answer, then circle the entire thing that you can see at the bottom there. So we said the answer was C and D. Let's just go through these and rule out the other ones. So A, let's have a look at A on the screen. So tropical storms don't often occur over land. And if they do, they will eventually lose their energy and they don't start to form over land either. It's not B because B in the bottom left of the map here, that's near to the Antarctic. So the sea is going to be cold. And of course it needs 27 degrees Celsius or above for a tropical storm to happen. Let's have a look at E. Now, tropical storms need warm water, so again, E is way out of the 5 to 20 degrees north and south of the equator, and E will be too cold. So you can see that C and D is the correct answer, because there was near the equator between 5 and 20 degrees north and south. Question number two, uh, how does a tropical storm form? And on the screen here, we've got the mark scheme from the exam. We've got level one and level two. Now, level one is one to two marks, level two is three to four marks, and there's an example there. So just pause here to read through that example. You might want to have drawn a diagram as well. An example will also appear on the next slide. Now we've taught you the formation of tropical storms using five letters. So ESC, which we've shortened from the word escape, and then T, from the word tropical and then s from the word storm so that gives us escts and on the right hand side we can see e means evaporated s means spiraling c means condenses t is thunderstorms and s is spins and once you've got those five words then you can create the rest of the answer beyond that including the green words and then a full sentence in addition to that Next question, outline one reason why tropical storms eventually lose their energy. Now, the question says a reason, so it demands a statement like which means that or as a result. There's got to be a reason. And when you're given a reason, you've got AO2, and that's the understanding you've got to explain. And there's two examples at the bottom there. So the first example is when the tropical storm moves over cooler water. So the tropical storms may move to areas where there's cooler water, less than 27 degrees Celsius, meaning that, so that's the AO2, they lose energy as the water isn't evaporated into the air. Or the tropical storms may make landfall or travel over land. As a result, AO2, they no longer have the source of energy from the moist warm air evaporating from the warm 27 degrees Celsius seas. So it must have a reason. Next question. The tropical storm will probably cause more damage at country B. So it's giving you a statement and it's asking you to back up that statement. So it says outline two reasons why this might be the case. Use the information from the figure above. Now it doesn't say use other information. It only says use figure uh, above. Now the figure above is a map, so you could use information from the map, and there's a fact file on country A and also country B. In the pink box you've got common mistakes. So it says use information from the figure above only. So that's it, only that. And here's an example. So if you write about sea walls or evacuation routes, those would not come up because that is not in the information above. So those would be incorrect. Now you'll notice this question is four marks and there's two points it asks you to make. So that means you've got to develop each one of your two points. So country B has been poorly built shacks on the shanty towns, meaning that they're easily destroyed. So that's in one of the green boxes there, the top left. Now that is only one mark. If you go to the bottom, just underneath, 
It says, country B has a lower GNI of 540 US dollars per person, meaning that people can't afford to protect their homes. So what you've got there is a meaning that and also some data to support your answer. The other example is houses in country B are low lying. So you can see here we're now using the map and the, and the storm surge will destroy them. But country B has got fewer TV sets, 21 per 100, and that means that people can't find out about the predicted path of the storm. So we're not going to accept anything that's not on the figure, and you need a which means that, and also quote figures as well. Now, there's lots of people in the room who didn't even attempt this question. Maybe because there wasn't a line there, and therefore people don't think it's an actual question. So it says the figure below shows the number of powerful tropical storms in the Atlantic each year. Now, a common mistake was it needs to be a bar that's the same width, the same height, needs to be centred, and it needs to be the same as the other bars. We had all kinds of bars that were really wide or weren't drawn with a ruler. It needs to be accurate. So the powerful tropical storms in 2005 were five. So just draw a bar that goes up to number five. Next question we have describe the changes to the number of powerful tropical storms between 1980 and 2005, as shown in the figure above. Common mistake is it asks for changes, therefore don't just quote random figures without showing that it's a change. Some people refer to the y-axis as the strength of the storms, because we know the strength of storms on the Saffir Simpson scale go from 1 to 5. It's not the strength, it's the number each year. So have a look at the y-axis label. Now half the people in the class went a little bit too far on this one and gave reasons why there might be more tropical storms or higher frequency. We don't need that, we just need the changes. So, here's an example, and the question, we'll say again, is about the changes. Therefore, use words like increase, de decrease, fluctuates, also include some data. And at the bottom in the green box, we've got an example. Next question. Suggest why the distribution and intensity of tropical storms may change in the future. Now, climate change affects the storms in three different ways. One's frequency, how often they happen. One's intensity, so the strength of the storm. And another one is distribution, so where they occur. So if climate change happens, they're going to happen more often, they're going to be stronger, and they're going to happen in more areas. Now, the question only talks about two of these. Now, a common mistake is that lots of the class talked about frequency. We don't want frequency, we want distribution and intensity, so that's the only words to include. And of course, if you use the words distribution and intensity, then that is great. The mark scheme is level one and level two, so level one is basic and level two is clear. So what does that look like? Here's an example, level one, Global warming causes the storms to occur in more places than they do now. The increasing sea temperature gives the storms more energy and causes the storms to be stronger than they are now. Now that looks okay. But the level two one, you can see the top paragraph is all about the distribution and the next paragraph is all about the intensity. So global warming caused an increase in CO2 in the atmosphere due to human activities. This will mean, so AO2, uh, the sea temperatures rise above 27 degrees Celsius, which means that places outside this, the usual 5 to 20 degrees north and south of the equator, may have tropical storms, thus changing their distribution. Or, so distribution just means spread. They happen in more places. The increase in sea temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius will mean that the warm, moist air is evaporated. This results in the storms having more energy. Therefore, storms will be more intense with storms maybe the lower end of the Saffir Simpson scale, maybe category one, might increase to say category five, where the winds are above 157 miles per hour. So there's quite a lot in there, maybe just a touch more than you actually need, but you can see the stuff that you can include. Now here's a really nice example of a student's piece of work from last year, and this student got four. So you can see the example we gave on the previous page, there was a lot of stuff in there, but this one is absolutely fine. So we've got due to global warming, 
sea surface temperatures will increase from 27 degrees Celsius, meaning, so that's AO2, there will be less Category 1 to 3 storms and more Category 4 to 5 storms on the Sapphire symptom scale. So you've got three lines there, uh, just one word afterwards, and it's pretty much covered. Next, in the blue box, we've got the distribution that will also be affected, as there will be a high chance of the current uncertainty of tropical storms out of the usual 5 to 20 degrees north and south of the equator. However, scientists say the frequency will decrease in 20 years. And now you can see on that final one, the students talk about frequency. Now we haven't marked them down on that, but they just haven't gained more marks. So they've already gained the four marks, but that bit about frequency, that didn't gain them more marks. Final question. Assess the extent to which uh, the primary effects of tropical storms are more significant than the secondary effects. Refer to figure four and an example that you have studied. So you must refer to the figure. You must refer to the picture and also one that you've studied. What are some of the common mistakes? Well, firstly, students didn't refer to Hurricane Irma. You were limited to level one, if you, even if you made great points. Some students, students didn't include data, geography words, primary, secondary, place names, examples. For some students, and lots of students, didn't annotate the question. And people sometimes wrote about the responses rather than the effects. Now, the effects is what the storm does, and the responses is what people do afterwards to make it not as bad. Here's a couple of really nice examples of people annotating their work. So you can see, as a teacher who's marking this, you look at this and you go, that's really nice. If that stuff at the top there is in their answer, I'm sure it's going to be really nice. And in every instance, it got top marks. So here's the figure. And typically what is really good practice is for you to look at the figure and just circle things that you know you might want to write about. It just helps you to focus when you keep moving your eyes back to the figure and you focus on the same things each time. So feel free to circle, annotate, or label the figure. Here's the mark scheme for this type of question. And you can see we've got detailed, clear, and basic. Now at the bottom, uh, basic, limited, slight, that's what the examiners say. Um, and this is really, I know what you're on about, but it's only because I taught you it, or you were taught by your geography teacher. Level two is somebody else in the class could roughly understand it, or maybe somebody else who wasn't in the class could understand it, and they get an idea what's going on. That's the kind of level of content. Level three is kind of similar to a textbook or revision guide, and people would thoroughly understand it if they've not been in the class. That's a different way of looking at the different levels. Here's a piece of information that you've seen before, AO1, Assessment Objective 1. Do you know stuff, data, geography words, place names, examples? You can include all these in your examination answer. AO2, that's understanding. Can you explain it? Words like this means that, this results in, or due to. And finally, of course, this is where most of the marks are. Can you make a decision? So using phrases like significant or important, and particularly always use the phrase or the word that's in the question. So the question has got the word significant in it. Here's a few pieces of uh, data that we're going to include in the sample answer. So you might have chosen different pieces of data and that's absolutely fine too. So here we have a sample answer and my example answer is supporting the primary effects will be more significant than the secondary effects. And you can see the intro there, I've named the storm, I've given the category, I've said when it is. Now, if you say the secondary effects are more significant, that's absolutely fine. But you know, whatever you choose, you've got to make two points for and one point against the however point. And of course, always write a conclusion. And you can see here that you've got your introduction, you've got your first point supporting your idea, so primary effects are more significant. Secondly, so primary effects are more significant than the however secondary effects can also be significant. And then, of course, you've got your conclusion. I'm going to show you different ways to look at this. And we're going to look at the AO1, AO2 and AO3 again. These will keep coming back. AO1, do you know stuff, knowledge, data, job words, place names, examples? AO2, do you understand it? Can you explain it? Which means that. And AO3, can you apply your knowledge and make a decision? 
So here you can see we've picked out the stuff. We've picked out the data, place names, geography words. So in your work, can you pick out your AO1s? Here we've got the which means that. Uh, we've got the AO2. You've explained your ideas. Here you've got the AO3. You've got conclusions. Now the word in the question is the word significant. So that's why the word significant has been used throughout because that's the word in the question. We've also got the think bigs. So thinking a little bit kind of outside the box. So positives, negatives, S, E, E, social, economic, environmental, short term, long term. And we didn't need to put local and global because the hurricane was in a very localized area anyway. And we've also got to refer to the figure because the question says you've got to refer to the figure. So somehow weave information from the figure into your answer. Now we've got here a summary. You can see how we've pulled all those things together all on one slide. So have a look at this or go back to the previous one without the annotations and just see how close you are with your structure and also your AO1, AO2 and AO3. Typically, people forget the mini conclusions at the end of each paragraph. And if you've got that, make sure you've got the figure and you've also got some think bigs, positive, negatives, SE, short and long term.